I would like to invite our next presenter, um, who is Dr. Uwe Peters from Germany. Welcome. Dr. Peters will be speaking um, his, about his presentation, which is called AMR in Focus, Traditional Complementary Integrative Medicine as a Supporting Strategy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dobry den, dami a panowie. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this antimicrobial resistance and it is one field we have a real chance for our complementary methods. And I have a little bit of focus on this traditional European medicine, so I'm from Amne here, but I have put it into the title this integrated aspect as well and the traditional aspect as well because this uh, antimicrobial resistance is a very, very old evolutionary tool of bacteria. It's nothing new, it's not, not coming from humans and uh, it is a natural path we have to live with and we have to handle it. And it is very interesting if we look for this topic, we look for more than 20 years to this topic and if you look for the success, it is very, very small. So the problem started to get bigger and bigger. And oh, I don't want to do this. What is the, how to go further? No. Ah, okay. Is, is it? No, there is a, what have I done there? Uh, no, I have, I, there, there's a okay. I make this one, I say. Yeah, is it? Whoop. Yes, and now we can try. What happened now? Press that again. Press that again. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, and if we look for the EU, so it is estimated about 35,000 deaths caused by MS, um, MRSA uh, in Europe, and it is a direct death. There are a lot of associated deaths as well, but it is complicated to count. And uh, so we have so much guests from India here. I looked up the data for India, and it is really a catastrophe in the relationship to Europe because it is uh, nearly 300,000 deaths, direct deaths by antimicrobial resistance in India in the year 2021, so the data, and it is estimated 1.2 million deaths associated with this IMR. So it is a, a big point to act. And uh, I mentioned uh, yesterday the house, we are living together, and we discussed a lot of things. Um, for example, that we have a lot of scientists and science inside the house. But we talk about science, but what is behind? You mentioned it. What is it if you have this evidence, if you have all these things? Is it real, the evidence? Is it real helpful? It is one tool, but we have the thinking that this is an absolutely tool, but it isn't. And we have to be careful, there's a science trap, and this science trap, if we go tap in it, so we are in a science cage. And this science cage is a monocausal system of thinking, of exploring knowledge. It is okay, it is a way, but we can't do it in the absolutely, um, to, to put it as the absolutely thing we have to follow. And so we have to look at the results and we have to interpret the results and we have to look for the experience. And we see, so we have so much science, so much articles about AMR, but no solution. And this, we have to find solution. And if you look for the last three years to the pandemic, you have all these models. You have seen how wrong the models was. If we started in 2020, for Africa it was millions of deaths, but it didn't happen. And, and the first time there was a truth as they talked about the measurements, about the face mask and the quarantine. They say, we don't cut the transmission. We know that we can't cut it. It is just for prolonging. 
and save the uh, amount of patients in the hospital. And then they talked about cutting the transmission, and what happened? It was not possible to cut the transmission. But what are we doing with the population dynamic of viruses? Nobody knows. We know nothing about population dynamic of viruses. But we prolong a virus process for three years. It is the first time in the world that we have a pandemic over three years. What happened with these viruses? Nobody knows. We will see. And what happened to viruses? We forced by a monoclonal antibody vaccination. It's the first time that we have a monoclonal vaccination. And as we started with antibiotics, this was the solution. And now, 60 years later, it isn't the solution. And if we look for the reasons, for the causes, so it is the medical, the veterinary, yes, okay, so we can discuss it. But is it? Is it the full, uh, the full circle? No, it isn't. If you look a little bit more, you have the production of antibiotics. There's a lot of wastewater going into the soil, into the agricultural, um, 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 and into the, into the fields in India, it's a real problem about this uh, production. And if you have the next one, nobody's looking for this. Household chemicals. If you have your laundry detergents, uh, look at the, uh, con uh, the, 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 the contents there. You will find antibiotic substances in it. And if you have it in the dishwater as well. And it's a lot of antibiotics we spread everywhere. And the next part is, Okay, we look for the, um, for, for the animals, how to um, uh, hold the animals. But in the normal agricultural feed, also for plants, we use antibiotic or substances with antibiotic uh, um, components to grow up our corn. This is the next part. Nobody talks about this. And we go further. If you have this pandemic, everywhere you have this uh, hand uh, disinfections, and we will see it's a real problem. It is strengthens the problem of antimicrobial resistance, and there might be some fields with question marks. We don't know. There are a lot of other causes for this problem. And what is science doing? It is just focusing on human medicine, on using it inside humans, and it is just, I don't know, a fifth part, a tenth part, it is just a signal, this circle, that there is a lot of work to do. And here you have just the list again uh, I mentioned before I started with the circle. Yeah, and there are some nice work um, I found out in the last three years. And uh, one is a microbial um, resistance um, in this household chemicals. And what they are doing? They are producing resistance in your household bacteria. If you find it in the dust in the house and you analyze the genome, you find these resistance genes inside. Very interesting. And if you look for the, for the next part, you have this uh, uh, washing machine. They use this for the newborns in, in the clinic. It is a hospital study. And you find, if you do it, you have a lot of resistance. In this case, it was uh, the Klebsiella. They, they found their Monotoka. It is not just the Streptococcus. So we have a lot of species. If we started with research, we found this problem. And the next is that um, we have the resistance inside the soil. There was a study um, compared the agricultural, the rural landscape in, um, uh, in the UK with the urban uh, surface, and it was less in the urban than in the agricultural landscape there, and we find it inside the soil. And I will show you the soil is a very critical part, we will see, for this resistance. And if you look further, we have the uh, concentrations of these disinfections from the COVID. And in Hessen, they made a study. It is inside the, um, the drinking water reservoirs, and it is inside the soil. So, and it is 
a, a problem in this, it threatens the human health now. We did it three years, and we had a lot of new resistance and a lot of new strategies, because bacteria are used to change their tools for antimicrobial resistance. And they can do it very, very fast, and we will see how fast it works. And you have this widespread uh, from this uh, hand dis disinfection, you can find it now worldwide over all. And the next part is what can we do with TCIM or with the traditional European medicine? And it's a new course, and that is important. It is important to have a new thinking about, because it is an old evolutionary principle. So we can think how it evolved, and we can think about what can we do with natural products to stop the process. And we have heard here a lot about mitochondria, we have heard a lot about energy, and so we can look for the energy household of the bacteria, because it is, not, it is not for free if you are, are a bacteria and you put in plasmides to uh, protect you against antibiotics. You have to maintain these plasmides, and it is a cost of energy. And it's a new thinking, it's a new way to higher the cost of the energy for the bacteria. And we can do this because the bacteria wants to survive. And so it is in special situations for the bacteria, they have to stay and, and invest this energy because the environment is, is, is in this case that the bacteria have no chance, they have to invest. But if there come stressors, additional stressors to the bacteria, they have to decide, hold the plasmides, leave the plasmides, use other strategies to survive. And this is our chance, so that we strengthen, so we bring stress inside the bacterial situation, that they say, okay, I have to change my strategy, I have to give, um, um, to, to, uh, to uh, put away my plasmides for the resistance. And it's quite easy. And we have to be careful, and this is very interesting, because if they put it away, it is not gone. And it's this work here, it is very, very new in soil, and you see this bacteria left their plasmides to the other colleagues. They can sample it again. And we have a lot of strategy in our body. And it is lysosome. It is some of the enzymes inside the macrophages. They destroy these plasmides. So that in the gut, there is no plasmide reservoir for resistance if you have a good microbiome. And it works. And we have the interaction between these both parts. And this is very interesting for science. So I talked about these models and the wrong models. And science is, life science is very complicated. I talked yesterday about vitality. What is it? You can't measure it. You can't put an index and scale. It is very complicated. It can change in an hour, in a day. So vitality is one point for one individual. It is complicated for science to put it in a model, to have an algorithm, it don't work. And here you have two living parts. The bacteria with their own vitality, their own decision making, how to survive, and on the other hand, the vitality of the organism interacting like an interplay between both, and it's so complicated to have it in science and we have to be careful. And I am an, um, I'm an uh, ecologist, and I know how complicated it is if you work with living systems, and it's so easy in the laboratory if you have fixed all the conditions, but if you are in nature, it is complicated. Okay, so the time is over, it's complicated. Uh, 
um, theme, and I will show you what we can with TCM, with the traditional European. It is this bacteriostatic, the phytotherapy, because bacteriostatic is better than killing the bacteria, because the immune system can put the bacteria. You have this immune balance therapy, a lot of we know from microbiology, uh, from, uh, from acupuncture, and so on and uh, we can do it with mental health. It's also a part to strengthen our immune system and the immune balance. And on the other hand, it's a new one. It might be bacteriophages they use in Georgia, and it is a complicated politi uh, politician theme as well. But everybody is thinking the bacteriophages are just killing the bacteria but it isn't the mechanism. The mechanism is that the phages go to the immune system as well, and we know that phages from the gut go outside to the lung epithelium and block adhesion receptors from viruses. Very, very interesting part. It might be uh, an own lecture next time here in Prague, and this is my opinion, we have go to the decision makers and say we have a new course, a new course of thinking, and perhaps we have a chance to reduce one of the biggest problems, the antimicrobial resistance, with the method of complementary medicine, and perhaps we need a lot of work for Ayurveda from the Indian side, because in Indian it is a much more bigger problem than in Europe, but in Europe we have a lot of science work for the traditional European medicine. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Patas, for your passionate and, uh, and very clear explanation of this complicated topic. When the balance is disturbed, the nature always finds the way how to compensate. And that's why healthy microbiome is very important, not only inside our bodies, but also outside of our bodies.